Abraham Lincoln was late for the play, so the play started without him. And then when he arrived and walked in the door and went up the stairs and walked along the, the second floor balcony to his box, the orchestra conductor saw him. And he called on the band to play Hail to the Chief. And that was Abraham Lincoln's great moment of triumph. It was in the happiest days of his life. The war was over, 750,000 Americans had died, and he would no longer have to command armies of young men to go to their deaths in battle. And he walked to his box, and he looked at the audience, and they were cheering and applauding. The band was playing Hail to the Chief, and he bowed to the audience. And this was his moment of triumph, because he, he had done as he promised. So this was his magical moment of triumph. The gas lights were hissing on the stage, the light rain was falling outside, an overcrowded theater was cheering the architect of victory. And that was Abraham Lincoln's greatest moment of joy during his presidency. John Wilkes Booth arrived a little later. You know, there's the whole theory of it started off as a kidnapping plot, and that's all we wanted to do was just kidnap the president and blah, 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 blah. I don't, with the lock on the door from the inside, how do you get the president and his wife and everybody down from the back? Like, no, but there was no rope ladder. There was nothing like that. Um, so I think the intention was to kill him that night. But no one knew what was going to happen. No one knew that a Confederate army wasn't going to march into Washington that night. No one knew that the entire cabinet had not been marked for death that night by Booth's conspirators. So there was a climate of fear and suspicion, really a climate of, of terror. That afternoon, General Grant left Washington and went to Philadelphia. So the top general was not in town. Grant was away. Uh, the vice president chose not to thrust himself forward at this moment. He was in semi seclusion. Secretary of War Edwin Stanton took control of the government that night. He set up his headquarters in the back parlor of the Peterson House, which is the house where Abraham Lincoln was taken after he was shot at Ford's Theater. And Lincoln was there from about 11 o'clock at night till he died the next morning, about 7.20 a.m. And from that back parlor, Stanton interrogated the first witnesses to the murder. He sent runners to the White House telegraph office, uh, the War Department office was just a block from the White House. The Telegraph office was there. So Stan got in communication with all the important cities of the North, New York City, Philadelphia, elsewhere, sending out commands, summoning troops, organizing the manhunt for John Wilkes Booth. So the focus of the entire U.S. government that night was the back bedroom of the Peterson House on 10th Street across from Ford's Theater. I would think it's safe to assume that as much as anybody was president at that during that few hours, it was Stanton. 